Algebra 2 Lesson 2. We're working on linear systems and matrices. We're going to talk about solving a system of three equations. When we solve a system of three equations, we need to have as many equations as we do variables. So if we have x, y, z, we need three equations. Solving for three equations can be a messy problem any way you look at it. It takes some time and some patience. You've got to keep track of what you're doing. Graphing is not such a good idea since you have to graph in three dimensions. And who's got three-dimensional paper? Even grapher doesn't work because you cannot pinpoint what the point is where they all cross. Solving by substitution is very messy because it gives you a lot of chances to make mistakes. Your best bet is to use elimination. We just learned how to do this. We're going to go through this example and we're step by step so that you can get this. It might prove useful to number your equations. So we've numbered them 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's go to the board. Okay, here's our equations, numbers 1, 2, and 3. Remember when we're using elimination, we're trying to find one variable at a time by eliminating other variables. Well, we've got three of them here. So we're going to have to first get rid of two, two equations that have x's in them so that we have two equations that we can solve for using elimination because remember, number of variables, same number of equations. All right, so let's get rid of the x in a couple of these equations. Let's start with the first one. The first one is a 3x and the third one is a 3x. So to get the 3x, when we add together, we want the 3x's to add together and be a 0. Well, we're going to have to multiply through this by a negative 1. So negative 1 times 3x is minus 3x. Negative 1 times y is minus y. Negative 1 times z is minus z. And negative 1 times 0 will be 0. And then we're going to simply add equation number 3. So this is the negative of equation 1. Uh, so now we're going to use equation 3. 3x minus y minus z equals 18, and that's equation 3. So we're going to add these two together. Well, the 3 x's eliminate. We have minus 2y minus 2z, and that equals 18, and that's going to be around equation 4. So minus 2y minus 2z equals 4, uh, excuse me, equals 18, and that's simply equation number 4. Now I'm going to have to do this again. This time I'm just going to pick on equation 1 and equation 2. I'm going to want to make my x's go away. So like doing denominators, I'm going to want to get these guys the same. Well, one of the quickest and easiest ways to do it is to simply multiply this one by 2. And since I want this to be a negative, I multiply this one by a negative 3. In other words, I just multiply it by the coefficients that I'm trying to get rid of. So... What I'll now do is I've got uh, 3x times 2 is 6x. 2y times 2 is 2y. 2 times positive z is positive 2z. And of course, 2 times 0 is 0. And then a negative 3 is a negative 6x. A negative 3 times a negative 2y is a positive 6y, and a negative 3 times a positive 2z is a negative 6z, and a negative 3 times a positive 4 is a minus 12. Got those two together, I get rid of that. I now have 8y minus 4z, okay, equals minus 12. Very good. Now, that's my equation number five. So, there's equation five, and that's 8y minus 4z equals minus 12. Now, you might see something you can do to eliminate the z and keep your y, and that would be perfectly fair. You might divide this all by half. It doesn't matter. I'm looking for z first because that's what I'm doing. All right, so I look at this and I go, oh, well, look, 
I need by, I want to get rid of y, so I solve for z. So I'm going to multiply this through by 4. So this is a minus 8. So if I multiply equation number 4 by 4, I get the following. Minus 8y minus 8z and 4 times 18 is 72. And that's a negative 4 times equation 4. Okay? You see that? That's what I did. I simply took this times a negative 4. Okay? All right. Now I'm going to add these two together. The y's eliminate. I'm going to be left with negative 12z. And 72 take away 12 is 60. Divide both sides by negative 12. So I get my z all alone. And I get z equals minus 5. So z equals minus 5. Now, now that I know that, I can go to either 4 or 5, and I can come up with the correct answer for y, just by plugging it in. So let's do, um, you have more room on your sheet of paper, and you can always turn a page. I can't. I'm stuck with what I got here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eliminate all of this because that's not necessary anymore. I'm going to say a minus 2y minus 2 times, remember z is a minus 5, equals 18, that's minus 2y, plus 10 equals 18, minus 2y equals 8, divide both sides by minus 2, I have y equals minus 4. Ah, now I have a y and I have a z. I can plug it into one of these, one, two, or three, and come up with an answer. Let's just go with number one. So I have 3x. y is minus 4, so that's a minus 4. z is a minus 5, so it's a minus 5. And that all equals 0. Minus 4 plus minus 5 is a minus 9. Migrate that over. 3x equals 9. Divide both sides by 3. x equals 3. And if we write it in um, the proper form, it's 3 minus 4 minus 5. That's all there is to it. As I said, it can get messy. And if you've got a single sheet of paper, you can work it straight through on a single sheet of paper. When I erase stuff, don't you erase it. So if you did, look again. Just keep tacking on, tacking on. Uh, if you'd like to see it, here's what my notes look like. See, I just kept working it and working it and working it until I got the right answer. Okay? But I worked it. Oh, and I did a check. Notice at the bottom, I did a check, and all my answers came out right. So once you've got these numbers, plug them into each one of these equations, and you're going to come up with the right answer. Okay. There you go. We'll do a couple.